Hi, Matthew from Solar Bikes. I'd like to give a review today of uh, an electric uh, bike coupled to a solar box, a few different solar systems. And then I'd like to talk about the range that's possible with this style. It's a 48 volt, 1000 watt motor. Uh, how this compares to whether having a different sort of battery system. I have a cycle analyst here. He's uh, made by a good electric bike company in Canada actually. Uh, it's going to measure volts and speed and distance. Uh, so first here is the general one sort of method of solar charging systems. I have a few different ones here that I've been playing with. This one has a, a 12 volt panel, 120 watt, goes into my box. You can see inside this box it has a battery, an inverter, a regulator. And then on the back side you have all these different inputs. So I just run this straight to a charger. Few different uh, 12 volt plants and switches and whatnot there. So I'm sort of working on this, probably looking at a neater, smaller design, maybe using lithium ion in the future. Another system, uh, these are a couple 48 volt panels, so one of them goes to this regulator, uh, charges a 36 volt battery directly, and another system runs here through to this battery bank. 48 volt uh, inverter and then just through the charger. So there's a few different, uh, one final little system here. This is the little bike that I use to get around town. So if you don't, just a small little panel, just charge the battery directly. Uh, it's about a 54 volt panel, sort of open, closed circuits about 43 if you connect it to a battery. So, I'm going to take this bike for uh, a review, see how it performs. It's my single speed fixing model and the only modifications are uh, it's a, about a 750 watt motor. Uh, here we have a tube battery, 6.6 .6 amp hours. I was trying to see how big you can get. So I found this is the largest mould that will fit in there. 6.6 uh, .6 at 48 volts it runs at, the controller's in here. The other modification is having a Sturmi Archer kickback gear. So run it uh, 14 teeth at the back and the regular ones at the front and it has a you kick it back slightly and so you have a high and low gear and it runs pretty well so just going to ride down to the beach uh, reset everything and ride to uni where I'll discuss a few methods on how to um, some algae research we do and a little bit of hydrogen stuff as well okay to the beach I guess all right so we're at uh, Leighton Beach here and we're just going to drive to the uni so I'm going to measure things here with the cycle analyst so just um, if you hold it down you reset everything it's fully charged about 54 volts it's sucking a little bit through the controller measures what hours watts regen volts max a fair few different uh, parameters so uh, I'll show you what it looks like at the end here we go Result of the test. <laughs> See here, still got 50 volts. Whew. Battery. I uh, didn't actually. We went 10.7 k's. 1.374 <laughs> amp hours. Uh, doesn't tell us much. Watt hours. Watt hours per kilometer. I was pedaling pretty hard actually. A bit of regen. Don't know why we got regen. We shouldn't really. Uh, Maximum amps, 33, minimum voltage. Maximum speed, we hit 46 k's. Average speed, 31.3, which is pretty good. We stopped a few times at a few different sets of lights. Took us 20 minutes to go 10 k's, so it's probably better than any other form of transport really in the city. Um, that's just uh, back to the start, so. Here is my work, uni. Uni of Western Australia, this is the biochem and plant biology building up there. And this is my solar charging system. The uni was gracious enough to let me set up. If you have a look on top of the block, if you come back a bit, you can see there's a solar panel up there. Can't see it too well, you can just see the edge there. It's a 48 volt, 100 watt panel. The 48 volt regulator comes down the cord. 
see here. So my cable comes out and I just plug it into my battery and uh, charges up a little bit. This is the plant called Arabidopsis thaliana. It's used in a lot of studies for genetic uh, phenotyping of hormones, drought resistant, salt resistant and things like this. Uh, it's the model plant, probably every plant molecular biologist works on this one. Here we have some algae growing up, a whole heap of different strains and different treatments. We have a few more over here. So we go around and we collect algae from different areas. You can see there's a few here, it's a chlorella, a local pretty virulent strain, and a few from different ones, and then we culture them up, and then select different strains. You can see we have a whole heap that would grow in different sizes and different media. So the aim with the algae as a biofuel, really there's a few different options. So probably the main one people work on is, um, is biodiesel. So you grow up the algae to a biomass and then you extract the oil out of it and then you convert it to biodiesel, which you get in fuel uh, many engines. You can also get ethanol out of it and if you do an anaerobic type of uh, fermentation. And hydrogen's also possible. You can grow algae up and under anaerobic, anoxic, uh, photosynthetic conditions it can actually produce hydrogen for a few days. We're also interested in uh, pyrolysis um, products so if you grow the algae to a certain biomass what's in it can you use it and pyrolyze it to create gases like um, hydrogen or methane and these um, gases can either be combusted or run through fuel cells. And that's sort of one of our aims. So, uh, yeah this is the sort of area where you, you take them from the wild, you grow them, you select them and then you have to do some type of analysis on them to see what's in them and how fast they grow. So I'll show you now one of the labs where we do a bit of the analysis on it. Come down here. We work for a group called Metabolomics Australia, so we analyse all sorts of metabolites. A few more algae growing here, just playing around with different light conditions using uh, LEDs. Uh, they're our hydrogen growing vesicles, so you can grow the algae in here and collect the gas and then measure the gas. And then what we often measure, we take some of the cells, we we'll spin them down, so generally you get your cells, take a couple mils of cells, put them in a tube, uh, this is a centrifuge, it spins it down, you pellet the cells, and then you extract them, so all sorts of different uh, solvents, heptane, hexane, methanol, uh, chloroform, everything you need to extract it, and you get your extract, and then we typically use this sort of machine, it's a GCMS, Gas Chromatograph Mass Spectrometer, so we'll do automated reactions with a robot. What happens then with the extract, you shoot it in this machine, you have separation um, columns here, so the, um, the, whatever you're looking at gets separated, you go into this device, which is the mass spec, you'll actually measure the masses and fragment the masses and they will be indicating what sort of products are in the algae. So, we have a look here. Oh, we have mass specs, more LC sort of stuff here. DCMS is really the machine that you use for the analysis. If you have a look here, uh, ran some algae samples recently. So this is what they tend to look like when you've done the extract. You only use microliters and micrograms. Uh, this is a typical chromatogram of the fatty acid methyl esters, the biodiesel. Uh, you can have a look at the different ones here. And this fragmentation, 298, it's very indicative of uh, steric acid. You can blast these against databases and you can analyse what compounds are actually in the algae. So if you're having a look, it's matching it against the library and you come up with this sort of steric acid. It's the main sort of fatty acid which can be then used as a, a good fuel. So you have a variety in algae, this one, not too many, but you can usually pick out about 20 different fatty acids in an algae sample. All right, let's uh, finish the test. We've done 10 kilometers on the battery. We'll see how much further we can get. All right, so we're up to 10.74 Ks and I'll head back home and uh, probably expect to run out sort of halfway through with this style battery. Uh, let's see how we go.
Okay, so I'm back and uh, just finished riding, got, just got back home and it was uh, just starting to cut out. So with a 6.6 .6 amp tube battery, I managed to get uh, 4.65 amp hours out of it here. Uh, it's dropped down to about 44 volts now and uh, 270 watt hours, 33 max uh, amps and yeah, so my kilometers, 20, 25 k's I got out of it and that was with about a 20 minute solar recharging while I was at the university. Um, probably I'd say this is really as large as you can get to fit in an average frame, if not a decent frame. So really if you're running the 750 thousand watt motor, you'd probably be better off going with the wrap battery. So this is the other option that you have here. Uh, this is 48 10 amp hours, so you should be able to at least push it to about 8 amp hours. So a lithium ion phosphate battery, and for this style system, you probably best with like a seat pole rack where it comes in here and it locks in. Doesn't perform as well, but you will get your distance, so you can probably go a bit further. Um, yeah, okay, thank you. I think, hope you learned something. I certainly learned to sit on the seat and keep your feet on the pedals. Uh, thanks.